Hello there. And today's session is all about grief and the feelings that some people um, go through after being made redundant. So with me today is Joe Tocker from joetocker.com. Joe is a holistic therapist and an emotional loss um, specialist. So um, Joe, before we get stuck in, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became to specialise in this area? Yes, hi Paula. Thank you for having me on today. Um, I uh, used to work up in the in the corporate business up in the city of London, and I um, was working there quite happily and fell pregnant one day, and you know quite excited about that. And twenty about twenty weeks around about twenty one twenty two weeks into the pregnancy, I went off for my scan. My twenty week scan was just a little bit late. Um, and was told that there was an anomaly mm. within the, within the baby, and that he wasn't going to survive. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I had to go through the whole um, birthing process, and um, you know it was really harrowing and traumatic and full of grief. Yeah. Um, I went back to work afterwards. I had about three weeks off probably and went back to work afterwards and I just felt like a hollow shell, former shell of my, you know, of my former self. And I decided that after a while, actually it wasn't what I wanted to do. I couldn't really cope with the pressure anymore and the dynamics of being in a, in a, in a um, corporate environment. And I just felt that there was, I had a pull to, to, to sort of go off and do something that was a bit more helpful to people. And um, so I d decided to train back then as an aromatherapist. And then uh, since then, I've, I've um, attached quite a lot of different um, modalities to what I do. So I do hypnotherapy and mindfulness meditation, Reiki and um, the energy alignment method. I've done coaching as well. So well-being coaching. And um, I do and I've been training in sound healing. So what that all did, you know, for me, when I was going through that journey of my own grief, um, as I was doing these therapies, like, you, you know, learning them, you kind of um, work on yourself a lot. There's quite a lot of personal development or things come up that you have to work on. So, you know, my grief kind of hit me in the face, really, to sort of work through. And at that point, I was sort of in survival mode, but just trying to get to get through. And when I qualified with my first job, I was working. Um, and I only wanted to work with people who were pregnant and I was doing, um, you know, teaching baby massage and, and doing aromatherapy for those who are pregnant and those who just have babies postnatally. Um, so I was really focusing on that kind of more positive side. I uh, didn't touch the loss, didn't, just didn't go there until I would say probably about 15 years later. <laughs> Yeah, I was ready to look at it. And then when I was working on this um, uh, program that was on, which was a self-development program, but training to do the energy alignment method, it was looking at your passion and your purpose and, you know, what were the stories in your life, looking back in your life, what were the aha moments, the biggest things that had happened that made you, that sort of changed you in some in some way. So I was thinking about that and I started to have to write it all down and write it as if it was a, an, you know, a play, sort of act one, act two, act three. And then when I finished writing that, I realized that, you know what, I've got so much experience now that I could be helping people through their losses. And um, so it started, I started off niching into just, you know, miscarriage or baby loss. And then after a while, now I've sort of niched out of that as well. I still do that work, but encompassing, you know, other people's loss, whether that's loss of loved ones, whether that's loss of a pet, whether that's loss of, you know, children leaving home, empty nesting, um, whether that's, you know, the loss around a relationship or the loss around of um, a job that you once loved or a career that you once loved that you no longer can do for any particular reason. So that's how I got started into, into it. Yeah. And it's also obviously why, why we're speaking to you today, because, um, you know, a loss of a job is, is, is a form of, of bereavement because it's not just the job. It's not just the work. It's not just your pay packet, is it? It's, 
the mm. team, the people around you. It's the, the feeling of security that gives you. It's that support network as well. Um, and, you know, all that um, may, may have gone. Um, so, yeah, redundancy will, will bring up feelings of grief for many people, won't, they? won't, won't it? That's so right. It will, Paula. And what's really interesting is that quite often people don't recognize it as grief mm. because they just put grief into a box of death, you know, grief after death. So, but it is, it is grief. And I think that's where, you know, when I work with people, they go, oh, is this grief I'm feeling? Um, yeah, this is grief that you're feeling. You know, you, you, we take you through the, the whole understanding of grief wheel where you start and it's just, it's exactly the same because you know you when you first hear the news you're in shock and denial a little bit like this can't be happening to me and surely not this you know you're so shocked and your body goes into this shock the state of shock uh it's like what we call an energy reversal we just sort of stuck our energy is not moving it just goes mm, stuck like that um and then after a while, we sort of start to feel the pain and the guilt and the emotions that come through, um, the pain of that loss and, and the guilt of feeling, well, you know, perhaps I wasn't good enough or um, guilt if it's around, you know, how am I going to support my family or how am I going to support myself and feel guilty, feel a lot of guilt um, or my children, you know, it's that a lot of that comes up. And then quite often the, you get to the angry point you know very angry it's like well why is this you know everything's wrong with the world why has this happened to me and um you know it's not fair and we we get really angry and the thing is off quite often our anger is sparked through kind of something that's not related as well so it might be just you know somebody said something to you that flips you out yeah. really you know and you think oh my goodness where did that come from or i remember with my um teenage daughter i was getting really uptight with her really angry with her I, you know it was long after my mama died and i was getting really angry with her because she was um something that happened at school and she was saying to me mom it's not that deep why are you getting so angry mm -hmm. and i just sort of went oh yeah that was a really un you know, that was a really over the top response. And then I thought, oh yeah, that's part of the grief. <laughs> so once you kind of understand it, it, it does make make a little bit more sense, but it seems to sort of come out, your anger does, can come right out of the blue. Um, so that's interesting. And then we get to the bargaining bit and, you know, we start to bargain with ourselves or if I hadn't have done this or I hadn't have done that, or maybe I should have done this, you know, we do the shoulda, woulda, coulda thing on ourselves which is not helpful for anybody, least of all ourselves. And, um, you know, so we go through that, that stage. And then quite often we can fall into a depression because it's just, you know, we feel really low. We haven't got much energy. We can't bother to do anything. It's like, oh, woe is me. What am I going to do? How am I going to get another job? What, where am I going to go from here? And it all seems too much just all seems too much so we kind of wallow in that low um, emotional kind of frequency of, of just being very very heavy and low and slow and mm. and eventually we work through that we sort of start coming as an upward turn and we start to feel a little bit more positive about things and you know there's sort of a glimmer of light that comes through and we start to sort of work through that working through everything and eventually we get to a place of hope and acceptance and that is where we can go okay right things aren't going to change so let's look to the future now let's what can I do you know so this whole cycle um doesn't need necessarily go in a sort of a linear uh circle it can you know we jump back and forth between different sections um sometimes we feel depressed again and then we have a better day and we come out of it um so we're not it's not a sort of a, a, a you know a circular way of of moving through the grief it can be a bit back and forth um and it can take as far as a timeline is concerned i always say to people there is no timeline on grief one because we're all so different and we react to things differently and a lot of it depends on what we've had in our background you know what experiences we've f formally had mm. that have um 
affected us, you know, and, and you know, if there, there is a compilation of, of th things that have happened, pile up and pile up, and we haven't maybe dealt with those things. And then when you sort of, when there's a whole lot, you just, you just find it's just so overwhelming. Um, so it is really, really important to, to um, think about what you've been through and to, and to release these feelings. And the worst thing you can do is just to hold on to them and stuff them in a bag or stuff them down so far down uh, and not acknowledge them yeah. because, you know, that comes out, that comes out in other ways. And it's, always comes out in a physical way, whether that's insomnia, sleeplessness, whether that's, you know, it could be a skin irritation or a rash or um, eczema or something like that, or it could be um, pain. Um, and it could be a lot of really much more serious dis disease. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. I, you know, one thing that I've noticed that amongst my friends recently who in the last few years who've lost parents actually a lot of them end up with frozen shoulders um we almost are laughing about it now it's like oh when's that coming along um but i wanted to go back to something actually that you said um about you know for years that you were you would look into the positive and and then it took you 15 years to sort of face up to the almost like the, the, the you know the shadow that you were perhaps you know, living with, but not openly acknowledging. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, that, that, I think that is one of the, the issues after being made redundant is, is that people, you said, you know, don't repress the feelings, but I think people sometimes get very conscious or self-conscious about having conversations with their friends and being able to say, actually, I'm feeling a bit shit and life is awful. And they're, they're always trying to put a, a you know, a bright face on it um what's your thoughts on that mm, yeah we do we do do that don't we um it's you know i think we don't let like to let people know that we're not we're not great a lot of the time um and we don't want people to feel sorry for us and things but i think it's just really really is so important um to just say look i'm having a really shit day you know sometimes i remember one time when i um after i gone back to work and we we'd all gone out this one particular night and I didn't particularly want to go but they sort of dragged me along and I was sitting there and I was trying I just felt like I was in a bit of a weird place and everyone was having a good time and I wasn't and one of the girls I was sitting beside said so so how are you Joe? how are you and I said actually I'm really bad at the moment life is really tough and we just had this little conversation and it was just so freeing to be able to say I'm not good you know having tried to put on this brave face through throughout the day and work you know everything's fine yeah. um and it really wasn't and i was really struggling it was just felt so liberating and freeing to be able to actually say that to someone and i, I still remember it because it was such a you know it was such a a, a, mo a special kind of moment for me even all these years later i still remember it and it just makes me think like you know if someone asks you how you are don't brush it under the carpet and say, yeah, fine, everything's fine. Mm. It's okay to say, well, actually, I'm, you know, I've been struggling a bit at the moment because things aren't great and I've just lost my job and been made redundant and I'm really worried about things. I know it really depends on a lot of um, who you're talking to because mm. some people react and say, oh, you'll be all right, it'll get better and then move on in which case that leaves you feeling quite vulnerable and quite sort of like not heard and not understood and things like that. So I do, I do feel it depends who you are, who you are talking to, you know? Um, but I think it's, you know, find the right people to talk to and just tell them how you feel, yeah. whoever that yeah. is, whoever that person is. And again, thinking about, you know, what you said about your anger coming out with your daughter you know, that, that might actually be your family and, and even your kids, if they're old enough to understand, to explain that you're, you're not feeling great. You've had this blow and you know, yeah. you're feeling a bit um, touchy or sad at the moment. And this is why. Yeah. So important. Yes. Yeah, so it's so important to tell your family around you because they, then they won't understand why you are reacting or what, in the ways that you are and being, being angry about different things. So yeah, it's really it's a good point. Really important to tell them.
So we talked about the different the, the different parts of the cycle of grief and, and how it's not a straight line. You might, you know, go back and forward. Um, so when you say, for instance, you are in one of those stages, let, let's pick depression, sadness or whatever as, as an example. Um, I mean, what should you do? Should, should you just like be there and just, I'm sad or I'm depressed at the moment and this is the way things are? Or should you be trying to chivy yourself and, and get out of it? Uh, that's a good point. That's a good question. Um, one of the things that, I mean, I think what is really important, important to do is to just sometimes go, okay, I'm feeling like this. So I'm just going to let that be. Because quite, quite a lot of the time we, we don't sit with our feelings, do we? Or whatever we're feeling, we kind of want to get away from those feelings or try and do something to distract ourselves or watch Netflix or, you know, make it eat something that you know will dull our feelings in some way so it's really really important to to just be with what you're feeling for a while and to also be really compassionate to yourself and just go okay so i'm feeling like this today and that's okay that's okay i'm you know i'm giving myself time to feel like that i think where the problem is, is where you are stuck, absolutely stuck in that and you just feel really like for days and it's not moving. Then that's the time to sort of think, well, right, okay, I don't want to keep feeling like this because you will get to a point you think, oh, I'm sick of feeling like this. I don't want to keep feeling like this. I really need to do something about it. Um, so those are the sort of the sorts of things. And I would say the simple things that you can do Apart from talking to someone or seeking counsel or um, going for some therapy or whatever helps enormously but those things if you're just at home and you want to do some different things I, I mean I got a whole section in my book that I wrote about um, what you can do to get yourself moving through and you know some of those things are movement you know move depression hates movement mm. it really does so even going out for a walk is great I mean, I don't, you know, some people like to run, they like to run it, run it out. That was never my thing, but a lot of people like to exercise quite hard and do it. But even a, a gentle walk, a walk in nature, just getting out and changing the scene is amazing. Yeah. Um, having a warm bath, putting in some essential oils, some nice calming oils or uplifting oils, you know, yeah. like, for example, um, uh, geranium is a great balancer and um, lavender obviously and chamomile nice calming but sort of still quite uplifting um oils um yeah so going for a walk um listening to uplifting music is really lovely it shift just shifts shifts that energy um you know practicing some yoga and, and honestly the easiest thing you do is breathing because we, we keep a lot inside and it's really, really important. A lot of us don't breathe properly. We take quite shallow breaths. And to be honest, grief is held across the chest and in the lungs. Mm -hmm. And we often find during grief that we are breathing quite shallowly, not, not proper breathing. So taking deep breaths is so super important. You know, breathing from your tummy, big belly breaths all the way up to the top of the lungs here, where there's nodes at the top of the lungs where the adrenaline, the cortisol, the, 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 the stress hormones are ha held, um, and then releasing them out with a huge long out breath. So I quite often give people breathing exercises to do. And you know, yeah. one of my favorite ones is breathe in deeply for a count of three and then hold it for three and then breathe out slowly and exhale everything out for a count of six. Yeah, that's one of really, my... and if you do yoga, it's good old om, <laughs> you know, to to get it out, to really release, it, start. It just moves, it shakes it, you know, moves the energy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, movement, even if it's just standing up and shaking, or you know, doing cross crawl or tapping here on the thymus, that's a good one for getting things moving. Where, where? Just on your collarbone. Um, yeah. yeah, just no, it's in the middle. It's really about here where you can see my necklace, just mm -hmm. there. Yeah. On your chest, middle of your chest, middle of your breastbone, and just tap that and that gets you going. And here's another place here, just under your collarbone. Okay. Just a bit of tapping. Yeah. Let's get your energy moving as well. 
Um, so yes, um, it's a balance. I would say don't push, you know, feel them, acknowledge them, let them be, let them be felt and then start doing some things to help you elevate your energy or shift your energy mm. and you'll feel lighter and you'll feel more able to, to move through it. Yeah. I think the worst thing you can do with depression is, is actually just go to bed um because everything's not moving then although we need sleep so but if you're going to bed during the day sleep is is your, your sleep will be affected during the night and so we really you know it's so important to have our sleep um yeah i think yeah, that you just reminded me i mean one thing about when you are um yeah going through these cycles i've noticed is that that people can get tired quite quickly so for somebody who's been made redundant, you know, their priority is probably going to be, you know, looking for a new job. And that, that can be quite draining. I mean, you know, every time you apply for a job, it can take a good few hours, can't it? Yeah. Um, so I suppose another thing is just to be kind to yourself and just, you know, don't set yourself this challenge of I'm going to apply for 10 jobs a day and all that sort of thing. Yeah, don't expect too much of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Show yourself compassion. Show yourself some love, you know. And when those um yeah if that's right don't set yourself to to a higher standards and just be kind to yourself and if you feel like taking a nap then have a nap mm. um i suppose when we don't get out of bed for three days that's the time when it becomes a little bit worrying and that's we we really need to make ourselves do something then otherwise we'll just go down down and the energy won't be moving at all um so yeah drag yourself out for a walk and, you know, the fresh air, it's such a cliche, isn't it? Get out in the fresh air. And we, I don't know about you, but my mother always used to say that when we were kids, come on kids, out in the fresh air and, you know, run around and yeah. get your oxygen going. And it, you know, the other thing she used to say is, um, it'll all feel better in the morning after a good night's sleep. And that is so, right. It doesn't, you know, you're worrying about something and you go to sleep with it, but when you, have a nice long sleep you wake up in the morning it doesn't seem as huge still there obviously but it doesn't seem quite as huge and um so yeah so the fresh air the exercise just a little walk um something uplifting yeah good sleep yeah and you mentioned your book so i know that um the book itself is about baby loss isn't it but it is yeah a, we were talking earlier you said there's a chapter that actually has got lots of ideas that could help anybody yeah it's this is the the book here it's called life after miscarriage your guide to healing from pregnancy loss um it is available on kindle but um so it has a couple of the two chapters that you know talks about grief and understanding the will of grief and what the different emotions that you might feel and face but um it also has um about some of the things you can do to help you through the grief and also some of the things that you might be doing that are not quite so healthy so you know they we call them that the coping mechanisms and we all do them uh, when we're not in a good place you know it's the emotional eating uh the netflix binging uh the constant online shopping when you know you haven't got any money coming in and you think you oh know my gosh and i can't stop myself from <laughs> you know, buying that because it was going to make me feel better and those sorts of things that, um, you know, we we, can, we have all fallen into from time, those sort of traps that we've all fallen into from time to time, drinking too much, smoking too much. I don't know if people still smoke. A lot of people don't, but, um, you know, looking for the answers in the bottle of a glass of wine or a bottle of wine, you know, we've all been there, we've all done it, but actually they don't help us and it's um a case of just trying to move through without that crutch that prop or when you are doing it going oh actually hang on a minute maybe i'm doing too much netflix binging maybe i need to get off there now and and just um you know there's nothing wrong with doing watching netflix i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but it's when you just spend like an entire three days watching it one thing after another after another again it just sort of it's the biggest it's a numbing technique and that's what we often do we try to just numb ourselves from 
feeling the pain or feeling the worry and you know it stops us it pro- keeps us in procrastination time stops us moving forward and, and trying to do something about it yeah yeah i remember one time uh i can't remember i was reading or talking to somebody about about pain and and you're right we do try and uh, numb ourselves and and you know distract ourselves uh but actually, when, when you face it head on, sometimes, and obviously there, there, there are various <laughs> levels of pain, but sometimes actually it isn't as bad as you think. Is it? You know, you sit with it and, it, you know, you think, oh, this is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. And I have a really, I'd love to show you this. Um, I have a really um, great, and it's a, it's a, vid- a visual that I'm, um, I'm going to just write down, i show you something about. Um, the pain. This is what I talk about with my um, my clients. You see, you know, if you think of yourself here, you can see this box. Yeah. So we have this. We have a pain, and the pain. Pain dot. Okay. Um, when we first, when something first happens to us, that pain is really big. It goes out, takes out all the all the room, and it hits the sides. And these are the sides where you feel the pain, and As we go on through grief, this becomes smaller and it doesn't hit the sides so often. So it's sort of quite a good analogy to imagine, you know, you've got this pain box and it's filled up with pain and then it gets smaller. As time goes on, it gets smaller and it doesn't hit the sides, but it still does hit the sides. Mm. It just doesn't hit the sides as often um, to create that sort of that pain hit. I mean, that's the thing with grief. That's, you never know where it's going to come up and smack you in the face. You really don't know. And it could be, it just often comes out of the, completely out of the blue, completely out of the blue. And it really blindsides you. And you think, gosh, what's happened? Where's that come from? Why am I, you know, why am I being triggered by that? Or why is this such, you know, such an issue? So it's always just good to be um, aware of it. And if it does happen, don't worry. You know, just think, okay, that's just, that's just the grief playing out. Um, and, um, okay. I, I, I hear you. I'm listening. I'm feeling it. Yeah. And, then, and even if you get, you know, or well, when you get a new job and you know, you know, safely there and, you know, you may still be feeling it from the last sort of, um, shock. Yeah. Well, it will, it probably might affect you. That's it in some ways because and still in quite a few ways, you know, because of your confidence has been, dipped quite a lot and you then you start to sort of second guess yourself am I am actually good at this am I actually good at my job and things like that and that's the time when we do all this mind chatter done the monkey mind stuff which doesn't help us at all does it in any way shape or form it just turns us you know turns into anxiety so it's just to you know keep reminding yourself it's okay I've got this job now and I am good at it and I know I'm good at what I do and just keep reminding yourself and then you know, it's it's often good to just write a list of all the things that people have said to you, where you're go- where they've given you compliments at work in the past, and what you've been good at, and just remind yourself of those things and write them down, and then take them out when you need to, and go, oh yeah, that person said, I, that manager said I was really good about doing this and that, and, and just remind yourself how good you are because it's so easy to self doubt ourselves. Yeah, yeah, and keep up the self care because. Yeah. and keep up self-care absolutely so so important yeah. right, well, thank you thank you very much joe that was that was really interesting so all joe's details are going to be below the, the video so people, anyone can get in contact with joe there so once again thank you thank you for having me it was great to um talk to you about grief and how to handle it yeah. and good luck for everybody who's going through it <laughs>